Hello and good morning. My name is Rebecca Khan, and I come from the Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts in Singapore. It is almost midnight here in Singapore, and I am very grateful to the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to share with you about how we have managed change and made transformations with technology for the arts. Before we begin, I would like to give you a very quick overview about NAFA in Singapore to put into context what we do. We have eight departments comprising of key areas in the visual and performing arts, 3D design, design and media, fashion studies, fine art, music and theatre, arts management and education, and dance. This is a glimpse of our campuses at the heart of the arts belt in Singapore. We are located at Bencoolen Street and surrounding us are the museums, Esplanade Concert Hall, and art houses. We are a city campus, which means that space is very tight. So we are always looking for new possibilities to facilitate authentic learning. Essentially, this is what we do at NAFA. Students come to us after high school, unpack and relearn processes of creating, improvising, choreographing, performing, designing, and art making. Online learning is applied in diversified ways to further enhance artistic creation and performance. Mobile technology in particular is used to complement studio practice and process-driven learning. So in many ways, tablet-mediated resources afford new exciting opportunities to take place. At NAFA, our iPad strategy stretches across both the visual and performing arts spaces. The applications are mainly used for artistic documentation, reflection, collaborative learning, communication, delivery, and social co-creation. To us, iPedagogy is a concept, not just a pedagogy, where we inform learning with technology using iOS devices to improve and enhance the artistic environment. So when did we first begin? Our iPad initiative commenced in January 2013 with 95 users involving the following leads. The senior management team, e-learning champions from each department to feed forward progress, iPad coaches, and a fleet of devoted full-time lecturers and students who were actively engaged in reshaping learning of the arts. In 2014, the iPad initiatives augmented with almost 140 users to consider the possibilities for full adoption in the visual arts. Three mentors were additionally appointed to assist new iPad affiliates and advocates to better use the technology and to support out-of-box traditional de delivery methods. This initiative was purposed with three goals in mind. First, to enhance teaching with creative technologies. Second, to establish a flagship of media literacies that adds value to the learning experiences of our students. Third, to build capacity and leadership in creation and practice vis-a-vis -vis technologies. The rationale was simple. If we devote resources and time to enhance art practices, then the focus can be grounded on improving learning experiences for all. If we continually engage with the use of technologies, then teaching will be strengthened and learning can take place in deeper and more meaningful ways. If we leverage art processes through applied pedagogies, then we will be able to appreciate technology beyond consumption and make technology an aesthetic. So having set these high-level goals to make leaders out of creation and practice, we forged on to empower those who believe in learning and change. In the process, we consolidated case studies that add value to the experience of using iPads. You are going to see four case studies that epitomize our learning journey with iPads since 2013. The outcomes described here are very much a testament of passion, commitment and support by the pilot group 
to explore how tablets may improve approaches and methods of teaching and enable accessibility of learning anywhere, anytime, and at any place. In essence, the tablets do not displace, but essentially complement and complement traditional processes of art making. Here are the four that I have selected to showcase the promises of technology in a studio-based environment. In the first case study that you will see, the iPads are used to capture online resources. In the second, we amplify the documentation with online reflections. The third case focuses on enhancements of the learning and delivery. The fourth dwells on new learning artifacts. You can see here that I've overlaid these with Dr. Puen Tudura's Samir system of enhancement and transformations in learning and Bloom's taxonomy not model. Together, the measures of application of technology and the descriptions of the levels of use in various stages of creative processes provide an energetic combustion. In the first case, substitution, the iPad acts as a direct tool substitute of studio demonstration with no functional change to build on professional capability. In the second, augmentation, the iPad acts as a direct tool with functional improvement in communicating and interacting with the students to enrich their learning experience. In the third, modification, the iPad allows for significant task redesign to deepen the creative process. And in the final case study, redefinition, the iPad allows for the creation of a publication with audio feedback that was previously unimaginable in a hard copy portfolio. My first case study is Miguel Chu's Introduction to Printmaking. This is a freshmore course and he uses two iPads to document his artistic processes. This fine art lecturer uses the Blackboard, which is our learning management system, and Vimeo to provide online demonstrations of many troublesome processes that students need to access a number of times. Miguel's first attempt to consider the use of video as demonstration was driven by the fact that absent students would normally find difficulty to proceed since they had missed out on techniques demonstrated in class. As there was usually a handsome accumulation of progressive techniques to master, students needed to refresh their minds on previously taught techniques during the entire course of the semester. What you have to imagine in your mind is one lecturer with 25 students all straining around the lecturer to see how certain processes are done. And literally, you've got that much space to see what he was doing with his hands. So visibility is difficult. So we talked about how we could create a better learning experience for the students, and he developed these instructional videos that are now up to Vimeo for students to access at their own time. I'll just quickly show this to you. My name is Reduction Monoprint. The material you need is one mm concrete sheet, block printing ink, scraper, and hard roller, a rag, and some cotton bud. Okay. Before you start, same thing. You need to do registration. Okay. Same thing. I'll treat for me. It's this way. Landscape format is this this way. Okay, after you do all these, we will roll out the thing. Okay, this second technique you do not need to roll out as the first technique. Uh, has to roll out even you can roll out unevenly this time around because roller does create interesting rolling marks. You might want to transfer it as a print. Now for this time now, I like this kind of format, so I leave it as it is. I just roll up the area that I want it to be, totally black.
The second case study is Grace Leong's ballet technique, which is a sophomore class. As a pioneer of the iPad initiative at NAFA in 2013, this dance lecturer took pains to film her students progressively over 14 weeks. Grace records the gestures and movements using coach's eye and uploads these to a closed Facebook page for sharing and critique. Students then describe, reflect, and evaluate their own practice to enhance their performance. These videos encourage self-awareness without the lecturer having to shout out loud during studio practice. Students were also able to see through the lenses of their tutor's eye since close pang shots were made. It served to train the students to view their positions at the right angles and pay attention to details that they would have not noticed otherwise. Let us just see one example. Okay, check out your supporting leg. You see, when you go a la second, the supporting leg here is not straight here. And look at the arm and the back as well. Uh, the wrists are quite nice. Your lines are pretty clear. Yeah? It's just that you need to be aware when you extend your leg. You need to be aware of your uh. What did the students think about this? Students reflected that they found mobile technology and specialized ballet technique indispensable. Technology enabled a clearer, better understanding of body and alignment and more efficient use of contact time. Okay, Chiu, please pay attention of your arch back. Yeah, you Moreover, they also appreciated the tutor's facility to use coach's eye, since the application had tools to inform learning, such as color-coded circles, arrows, text, and voice over. Very frequently, students would ask their peers to view and comment on one another's practice. This enabled them to build observational skills, gesticulate about their movements, and slowly rethink about their processes. Further, the reflections they had made had to make them rethink about the processes that they were executing and the specific goals that they had in mind to measure improvement of their learning progress. Thinking about just how ugly their poses first appeared enhanced their aesthetic sensibilities and self-awareness. My next case study is Illustration Studio. Illustration Studio is about developing a strong conceptual and communication skill developments using the application of hand-generated mechanical or digital image making. This is a sophomore module in the Department of Design and Media. Adobe Ideas is a digital method that the students deploy. These are some of the images that you see on the student's iPad. Using Adobe Ideas, the student reframes the tail of the peacock with different layers and hand sketches over the images to create a new illustration. Following this, she adds layers over the model on the iPad with more sophistication to realize her peacock of feathers and imaginative futures. My fourth and final case study comes from the Department of Music module, Instrumental and Vocal Teaching. This module develops pedagogical skills and abilities to teach an instrument. Using their iPads, final year students in the Royal College of Music degree program filmed their teaching observations and practices and discussed this with their tutor, Dr. Ernest Lim. Videos enabled the spirit of self-directed learning to materialize, especially since students were required to evaluate the effectiveness of their own practical work. In addition, the AirPlay facility enabled discourse about a variety of educational concepts during class discussions. Some students used Evernote to document their thoughts and address specific teaching issues. They also used the Blackboard app to assess the module information and materials. In this module, students were required to consolidate case studies in a portfolio, focusing on pupils they had taught, 
with different levels of abilities and skills. This is Jeremy Cole's portfolio, The Voice Sculptor, which creates his case studies using iBook Author. As you can see in the content, the iBook was designed to include lesson observations, lesson objectives, lesson plans, and teaching resources. This mode of presentation communicated a strong and intuitive sense of his understanding about his students' needs. It also enabled the author to precisely present technical, intellectual, and musical attributes of his students, record her progress, cite professional observations, and make an assessment with greater clarity. The value of this iBook becomes so visible for a practice-led subject such as this, since various forms of media such as videos, photos, audio recordings can be integrated as one in just a few clicks. So the four case studies that have just been presented is the tip of the ice book on how technology has been used to provide meaningful learning experiences for our students at NAFA. The tablets add value to the learning engagements. It is an effective tool for communication, assessing instant feedback, reflection, exploration, content delivery, and experimentation. But when we go deeper, you notice that the iPad begins to morph into an aesthetic tool for artistic creation. Yet, the artist as an educator is still indispensable in the studio. In general, most of our colleagues and students do feel that the tactility of face-to-face -face contact in the studio needs to be preserved in order for individual and creative spirits to thrive. How do you know the effectiveness of the iPad journey? To share with you, we have documented these processes through a report where students express their creative exploration in a four-step process fondly coined by our Apple Certificate Trainer and Senior Lecturer from the Department of Design and Media, Mr. James Sin, as TRIP. T for ad hoc thoughts that come to their minds daily. R for research to confirm these thoughts. I for idea development using applications as tools. And P for presentation to challenge students to explore apps or methods of presentation that enhance their communication skills. Apart from this, we have conducted surveys, interviews, discussion forums to confirm their preferences. These are just some findings to share with you. In 2013, we surveyed 1,424 students to ascertain how technologies affect the way that they prefer to learn. Almost half of this population had their own tablet devices. As you can see, there are no question that the online learning was important. It helped them learn more effectively. E-learning seemed to be an important element in their learning experience, an important component in their present courses, and it would be good if there were more e-learning in courses. This was consistent across all eight departments, and the research was very good for traction. The majority of students desire to explore technologies in their learning. 72% of the students indicated strong interest in the use of tablets for learning. 52% actually questioned whether they could really understand better using a tablet device. But almost everyone was willing to purchase own tablets than loan tablets on an hourly basis. The findings also show that there was a positive impact of tablet-mediated technologies on students who were presently owning the devices. Tablets made courses more enjoyable. With tablets, they could interact more. They found using tablets easy. Tablets improved the learning of their discipline. And tablets had the potential to enhance their learning experience. With these results, we took further steps to deepen the exploration of using tablets beyond mere instructional tools to learning tools that aided their creative process. At the start of this year, we continue to track the student perspectives of using tablets in more focused ways. Students were asked to comment about the use of the iPad within specific disciplines, and these are some results that show significant improvement and engagement in their disciplines.
Our colleagues themselves commented that they learned much from the larger student body as well. In teaching and learning initiatives for which I oversee, the iPad has seamlessly brought people together to share a common spirit of passion for teaching and excellence in learning. The majority agreed that the iPad played an efficient role into the success of the pilot more than any other tablet or mobile learning device. As our educators report, the deciding factor of choosing the iPad as a learning device is conditioned by its aptitude to improve the learning experience, the technological support, the ease behind iOS and education. In addition, the longer battery life, ease of use, operational speed, price, and technical support from Apple land weight. To give you an example from a circle of learning, this is Kelvin Kerr from the Department of Design and Media. So that was Kelvin Kerr in experimental video. Our digital literacy strategy is driven by enhancements in four areas, fondly known to us as the PEEP model. Productivity, engagement, experience, and practice. We also have a policy to adopt transformational pedagogies without digital white elephants, because no matter the strength of your artistic talents or the flexibility of the EdTech team, White elephants are essentially a waste of money and resources and are difficult to account for once they are there. So what are our key success factors? To share with you some of our successful implementation factors after one and a half years are as follows. Shared action with the iPad communities, coaches, curriculum specialists, student forums and surveys, student survey and dialogues, advisors, 
advocates and affiliates. Shared responsibilities through evaluation of grants for apps and even receiving training in facilitation skills. Shared accountability to teaching and learning agreements with staff, regular involvement with the iPad community of users, informal staff dialogues, sharing and reflections at the start and at the end of the semester. And last but not least, shared vision with the management and the staff to improve learning experiences for all students, strengthen teaching practice and work on focus, question and answer strategies. In this presentation, we've looked at how the iPad holds the promise of improving personalization, reflection, articulation, advocacy, exploration, documentation, investigation, and creation of artistic processes, products, and concepts in a student-centric curriculum. We've shared about processes and strategies to iterate the success of the implementation. I've talked about the advantages of iPad for the learners using interviews, surveys, and community circles of learning. And I've talked about four best practices that benefited from the use of the iPad. In conclusion, I'll leave you with these takeaways that have made a difference in our journey to engage with innovation and creation. Number one, focus on the learning, not the teaching. To succeed, focus on low-hanging fruits Help lecturers find their favorite apps and match this to their favorite subject. Third, contextualize your needs according to what your school needs, not what you think they need. Fourth, define your product with a shared vision about what technology as an aesthetic can do for the arts. And lastly, differentiate the artistic experience by defining models that will make a difference to art pedagogies iPedagogy is an opportunity for us to rethink our artistic processes, rethink how people are teaching the arts, and rethink models to improve the student-centric experience. That's very much it, and thank you so much for listening. I'm happy to take any questions, and I leave my contact with you for your feedback. Thank you once again, and have a good day ahead.